Hi dear students, I'm Dr. Bahar, lecturer in the College of Pharmacy, University of Mustan Saliya, Department of Pharmacology and Toxicology. Our lecture in this day related to the drugs used for treatment of uh, heart failure. As you know that heart failure related to the reduction in the cardiac output of our body and heart failure associated with so many signs and symptoms related to that reduction in the ejaculation fraction. As a compensatory mechanism for reduction in the heart failure, we have about four compensatory mechanisms in our body. The first one related to the increase in the sympathetic activity as an increase preload or venous return by increase the central venous pressure as a result of compensatory mechanism. The second one related to the activation of renin angiotensin aldosterone system and this associated with an increase after load or peripheral vascular resistance because an increased angiotensin due to the renal hypoperfusion. The third mechanism related to the myocardial hypertrophy and this associated with an increase the chamber size or thickness of our uh, ventricles and associated with remodeling. The fourth mechanism or compensatory mechanism is called the acute or decompensated heart failure and this is the end stage of the heart failure. Also, we can classify heart failure according to the systolic failure or what we call it the heart failure associated with the reduced ejection fraction. And the other type is the diastolic heart failure and associated with the preserved uh, ejection fraction. The strategy for management of heart failure related to decrease the dietary intake of sodium and limitation of fluid using positive inotropics and avoid drugs that precipitate or exacerbate the heart failure such as non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs and other negative inotropic drugs like calcium channel blockers. These are drugs that can control or manage heart failure. We have about seven groups. The renin angiotensin system blockers, we mean by it ACE inhibitors like captopril, angiotensin receptor blockers like candisartan, beta blockers like etinolol, diuretics like frusamide, direct vasodilators like hydralazine and sodium nitroprosine, inotropic agents like emrinone, digoxin, and dubutamine, and the last one is the aldosterone antagonist like spironolactone. This slide represents the phases or electrical phases of the cardiomyocytes. We have four phases, starting from the zero phase, which is the fast, the, uh, the fast upstroke phase where the sodium channel open as a fast channel and there is upstroke and the current is blocked by some drugs like anti uh, arrhythmic agents like Kennedy. The phase one which is the partial repolarization phase is rapid phase of repolarization where the potassium channel rapidly open and close. The phase 2 is called the plateau phase where the calcium channel voltage sensitive calcium channel is open and the, there is a balance that is slow the outward or polarized leak of potassium. The phase 4, the phase 3 sorry is the repolarization phase where the calcium channel is closed and potassium channel open associated with uh, repolarization. The first phase is phase 4, 
which is called the forward current where an increase in the sodium permanently and spontaneous depolarization preparing for the next action potential this scheme represents how the cardiomyocyte contract the play the important role here is for uh, intracellular calcium where calcium can intra enter to the cytoplasm from the outside of the cell or uh, after release from the storage site from mitochondria or endoplasmic reticulum and an increasing the calcium concentration will uh, affect on uh, myosin uh, light chain for contraction of the uh, muscle also there is a regulation of the level of calcium within so many pumps present within the cell membrane of cardiomyocytes like sodium calcium exchanger and sodium potassium ATP uh, pump so in this scheme we will uh, clarify the pathogenicity of uh, cardiac failure we can see that the patients with cardiac failure associate with reduction of the cardiac output and so decrease afterload decrease blood pressure so reduction in the renal blood flow compensatory mechanism number one as we said is the overactivation of renin angiotensin 2 system and aldosterone ending with an increase sodium water retention and as a result is uh, oedema peripherally or pulmonary oedema the other side in cardiac failure patients there is an increase in the venous pressure and sodium water retention so here we have an, an increase in the preload and as a compensatory mechanism uh, also there is overactivation of the sympathetic uh, activity ending with interfering with the renal blood flow the elevation in the venous pressure associated with increase capillary filtration and also ending with oil this scheme also uh, summarize what we're talking about the compensatory mechanism and the events associated with a reduction in the cardiac output as we said decrease renal blood flow decrease renin release and angiotensin ending with an increase in the pre and after low and remodeling also there is a reduction in the cardiac sinus firing compensatory mechanism at over activation in the sympathetic discharge increase force and rate of contraction and also end with the same uh, results so there is a elevation or increase in the pre and after load and uh, remodel this end with an increased cardiac output by compensatory mechanism but this compensatory is transient at the end the compensatory co cause damage to the uh, cardiomyocytes and so called the decompensated or acute heart failure stage now we will start with the uh, group of drugs for management and control of heart failure we will start with ACE inhibitors and ARA this figure represents the mechanism of ACE inhibitor where the angiotensinogen by renin converting to the angiotensin 1 so ACE inhibitor here will block the conversion of inactive angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2 as angiotensin 2 decrease there is reduction in the uh, sympathetic nervous system increase in the vasodilation of vascular smooth muscle increase the level of bradykinin 
and decrease reduction retention sorry of sodium and water so decrease pre and after load and control by this way on a cardiac fill so there is some difference between arab and uh, ace inhibitors arab usually indicated for those who cannot tolerate ACE inhibitor side effects like persistent dry cough and angioedema. So it is a good alternative for those uh, suffering from the complications of ACE inhibitors. Also we have aldosterone antagonist which can be indicated for severe stage of uh, heart failure by uh, using spironolactone or epirinone and uh, these drugs can decrease or control the remodeling that associated with a heart failure of the cardiomyocytes. Right. We can see from this study that cumulative mortality rate is reduced by using uh, one member of uh, ACE inhibitor like in a LAPRI compared with placebo. If we go through the beta blocker group, the mechanism for control of heart failure associated with decrease in the heart rate, decrease in and decrease remodeling. So it is indicated for chronic stable heart failure by using a small dose. Good example we have carbidilol, which is a non selective beta blocker associated also with blocking of alpha adrenal receptors and other examples like bisoprolol and metoprolol. Diuretics can also indicate it for heart failure, specifically loop diuretics has decreased both the pre and uh, after load and also they decrease the symptoms associated with uh, shortness of breath, paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea, and orthopnea. The uh, vaso and venodilators can also indicate it for heart failure. We usually combine the venodilator like nitrate with the arterial dilator like a uh, hydralazine to decrease both the pre and after load with those suffering from heart failure. So, what about the positive inotropic drugs? We have uh, three members in this uh, family. The first one is the digitalis glycosides like digitoxin and uh, digoxin. And most of the positive inotropic drugs nowadays indicated for acute heart failure only because the survival rate or more survival rate decreased by using these drugs. The digitalis can be indicated uh, and acts for heart failure as they inhibit sodium potassium ATPase, so decrease the calcium efflux outside uh, the cell membrane. This scheme represents how digitalis inhibit this pump and ending with increase the free calcium level within the cytoplasm of cardiomyocytes ending with increased force of contraction. Also, digitalis have a vagotonic activity, so cause bradycardia and decrease oxygen demand, and also decrease conductivity, so can indicate it for those suffering from uh, atrial uh, fibrillation associated with heart failure. Also, the digitalis uh, have neurohormonal inhibition by inhibiting sympathetic nervous system activity. So, the main indication of digoxin or digitalis is for severe heart failure and for uh, those uh, 
suffering from severe guest heart failure not for mild to moderate or those associated with just right heart failure and alone they may indicate for those suffering from left heart failure and severe uh, cases because digoxin have so many adverse uh, effects and require a specific antidote to detoxify its effect how the positive inotropics and digital specifically or digoxin can uh, control or manage the symptoms of heart failure we can see the y-axis represent cardiac output x-axis ventricular and diastolic pressure uh, the point a at which there is normal opening point in the healthy heart so the a represents healthy subjects if we go pass through uh, point B, we can see initial reduction of contractility from A to B due to heart failure. So the cardiac output starts to decrease. Here the patient suffering from fatigue. If we go to uh, step 3, we can see the ventricular and diastolic pressure increase from point B to C in an effort to maintain adequate cardiac output. Here the patient suffering from dyspnea. And if we go uh, to the step four, we after administration of digoxin as treatment, we can see the digoxin cause an increased contractility from C to D, so lead to an increased cardiac output and decrease the ventricular and diastolic pressure. This is slide also summarizes what we're talking about. The green line represents normal subjects, good cardiac output, and less end diastolic fiber length. The uh, red line represents compensatory response or treatment, and those with without treatment suffering from the heart failure, which is represented by the blue line. What about the difference between digoxin and digitoxin? We can see that digoxin have less protein binding, rapid onset of action, and shorter half-life, so it is preferred on digitoxin nowadays. The drug-drug interactions between digoxin and other drugs is so many. For example, amiodarone and erythromycin increase digitalis concentration and this may occur during current therapy so this enhanced potential for cardiotoxicity on the other side some drugs like steroids loop and thiazide diuretics decrease the level of potassium in the our body so also enhance the potential for cardiotoxicity right uh, another example on positive inotropics, we have what we call it the sympathomimetic drugs like dopamine and dobutamine. They are acting on the beta adrenergic uh, receptors, activate adrenaline cyclase, and so increase the cyclic AMP by uh, and this ending with activation of the protein kinase, phosphorylation of calcium channels, and enhance the entrance of calcium to the cardiomyocyte and increase force of contraction. On the other hand, another positive inotropic, we have the phosphodiesterase inhibitors like milirinone as inhibiting this enzyme, as inhibiting the converting or degradation of cyclic AMP to AMP, so increase the level of cyclic AMP and as end result increase the force of contraction. So what about the order of therapy that's indicated for management of heart failure? From this slide we can see the simple cases can be managed by just diuretics. The mild or to moderate case 
can be managed by ACE inhibitors plus diuretics or digoxin plus diuretics. In the severe case, we can use triple therapy like digoxin plus diuretic and ACE inhibitors. This scheme or stepwise uh, figure represents step up sorry figure represent the uh, orders of therapy also and uh, the stage one is the high risk with no symptoms of heart failure so we have to re reduce the risk factors and patient give patients some educations or instructions like sodium retention and water or fluid limitation in the stage uh, B, we can see the structural heart failure changes with no symptoms. We can start with uh, ACE inhibitors or ARAB in all patients. Beta blocker can be selected for some patients. In the severe case, there is structural heart disease, previous or current symptoms. So ACE inhibitors, beta blocker can be given in all patients. Dietary sodium restriction also uh, beneficial here with diuretics and uh, digoxin so to summarize this uh, chapter about heart failure we can see the site of action for our uh, drugs the vasodilatory drugs uh, decrease preload and decrease central venous pressure the positive inotropic act directly on the uh, cardiomyocytes and increase force of contraction the ACE inhibitor inhibit the formation of angiotensin uh, 2 while diuretics uh, decrease the sodium and water uh, retention so at the ending of uh, this chapter uh, our dear students can answer or understand uh, these points describe the strategy at least major drug group used in treatment of acute heart failure and chronic failure. Describe mechanism of digital activity and major effects. And describe the nature and mechanism of digital toxic effects. List some positive inotropic drugs other than a digitalis. And describe the beneficial effect of diuretics vasodilator, ACE inhibitor, and other uh, drugs. At the end, we can make self-assessment by answer question. Compensatory increase in heart rate and renin release that occur in heart failure may be alleviated by which of the following drugs? A. Milirinone, B. Digoxin, C. Dubutamine, D, enilapril, and the last one is metoprolol. So, which is the correct answer? Thank you for your good listening and with best wishes. Goodbye.